Despite the idea of the unimaginable happening when Sundance has been cancelled for the second year, the Institute, filmmakers, celebrities, fans and film lovers all around the world still managed to provide us with some special Sundance memories from the most prestigious film festival in the calendar. On Steve's Indies today, I'm going to go through some of those moments and highlights talking about awards, premieres, meet the artists events and of course, the films. Before we start, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and before you go, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to smash that like button. Yes, if you didn't already know, the in-person side of the Park City embodiment has been cancelled. But still, this year didn't stop everyone from breaking records. This year's Sundance provided us with a above 60 films, the most there has ever been for a year. So let's go through some of the best. 26 jurors voted across various categories to award the prestigious and ever so illustrious grand jury prizes. And I just quickly want to take you back to my previous video, Sundance 2022, What to Expect, where I spoke about what I believed would dominate the documentary category. It's just a little tiny pat on my back, but yes, Christine Choi's Exiles, about three dissidents from the Tiananmen Square massacre, following stories of a closure and war, won the US grand jury prize documentary. Like I mentioned, I really believed that this one would win and the story of the massacre firsthand from survivors has to be respected and I'm so glad it won. The audience award for US documentary, however, was awarded to Daniel Roa and Navalny, which is a fly on the wall doc thriller kind of thing surrounding an authoritarian Russian leader being poisoned by the Novichok nerve agent and his recovery slash return home. Now this story kind of sounds a lot like the Icarus documentary that was filmed about Russian alleged doping during the Olympics. And it makes a lot of shocking discoveries. Who's betting that this will be on Netflix soon enough? Continuing with documentary awards, we have World Cinema Grand Jury Documentary, which was awarded to Shanak Sen for All That Breathes. Set in Delhi with very dark themes about two brothers protecting a casualty, which to me sounds almost too surreal to be a documentary. Then we have the Audience Award for World Cinema Doc, which went to the territory about Brazilian farmers protecting a region of the Amazon, you've got to love a bit of indigenous fight back when it comes to the environment. According to statistics and a massive festival favourite out of the 84 features, Navalny was a festival favourite. In fact, it won the festival favourite award. Of these I've mentioned, ones to watch out for and let's not forget Choi's Exiles and of course the popular Navalny. Moving swiftly on to the Dramatisation Awards, the US Grand Jury Prize went to Nikiaku Jisoo and Nanny, which is really interesting because Nanny is a horror film, or as Chelsea Barnard states, the Nanny is a film that cannot be contained into one genre, flooding the audience with a compassionate and horrifying portrayal of motherhood and loss. Essentially, Nanny is about Aisha, who works for a privileged couple in New York City, awaiting the arrival of her son from Senegal, where she falls a victim to lots of supernatural activity. I think this will be well worth the watch, and I might just even do a review later as well. It could even be one of the standout horror films of this year. The Grand Jury World Cinema Award went to Alejandro Laganza, Greasy and Utama, which is a Bolivian film I believe that kept appearing, is a tale of survival for an elderly couple trying to survive an uncommon drought in a world that they've always lived in. On paper, it doesn't really sound that exciting, but it obviously done something right. Now this one was really popular and actually turned a few heads in the process, when the US Audience Award went to Cha Cha Real Smooth, which made its premiere at the Sundance taking the popular award. The film stars Rafe, the director himself, and the brilliant Dakota Johnson about a man that works basically in a bar mitzvah bar and starts a friendship with a young woman and her daughter. Cha Cha Real Smooth, directed and written by Rafe Cooper, explores love and awkwardness and appears has been a storming independent success. This really isn't one to miss at all. And the audience World Cinema Drama Award went to Girl Picture, which I believe is a Finnish love story or like a coming of age story. It's not really my kind of film, but the way it sounds 
Um, I'm just going to let you decide whether it's worth the watch, to be honest. Of course, some of the best upcoming independent directors and filmmakers were awarded for technical artistic areas, like Reed Davenport, who directed I Didn't See You There, and Jamie Dack for Palm Trees and Power Lines, which is a teen drama coming of age film about getting stoned, which in independent film terms is often a recipe for award success. Strangely, other directing awards were not given to directors of the main awards, if that makes any sense. For example, Christine Choi won Best Documentary, but not Best Director, which at the Oscars doesn't really happen. Often Best Pick goes part and parcel with Best Director. But I guess that's why this festival is so good and not at all predictable, showing us a variety of films and filmmakers from all walks of life. Now, there were many more awards, but for time's sake's purpose, I could really only give you the main ones awarded from the prestigious jury, and of course, from the popular masses with the audience awards. You had so many Meet the Artist events, which in past events didn't seem possible, but due to the ever-changing pandemic landscape that we all find ourselves in, this ultimately provided us with more Skypes and online interviews and takes from the masterminds behind the Sundance Film Festival. There really are too many to cover, but I did see some highlights involving Eva Longoria and Amy Poehler, Emma Thompson, Karen Gillan, and of course, many more. So all in all, I'd say despite everything, Sundance 22 was a success. But through its continuous success in these kind of film festival situations, are we heading toward more online or non-in-person award events. I'm not sure. You still can never really be the in-person spectacle and the collective film-loving event that is the Utah Salt Lake City Sundance Film Festival. And on that note, take care everybody.